in this worked example, we're going to use the mathematics of how fast something can be uh, and not spin itself to pieces that we talked about in the context of neutron stars in a quite different context, asteroids. This method is actually used to estimate the density of asteroids by looking at how fast they spin. So let's imagine we have a spherical asteroid made up of something with a density of around 2,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And let's assume it's not solid, but it's like a pile of gravel or something like this. So if it does spin too fast, it can fling bits out. The question is, what is the minimum period? I how fast can it spin? Now we know in the reference notes that the radius, the limiting radius, is equal to the cube root of g mass of the asteroid period squared over 4 pi squared. Now we're going to need to rearrange this to find the minimum period and we don't know the mass, we just know the density. Well that bit's pretty easy because the mass is just going to be the volume for a sphere 4 thirds pi r cubed times the density. So let's take this equation and cube both sides and we end up with r cubed equals g p squared over 4 pi squared times the mass, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed rho. Hmm, interesting. Well, the radius cancels out. It doesn't matter how big it is. One of the pi's cancels, the 4 cancels. So what we end up with is that 1 equals g period squared density over 3 pi. So the period is going to be equal to the square root 3 pi over g rho. And if we plug numbers in, that comes out as about 8,400 seconds, which is about two hours. So for an asteroid of this density, you don't expect it to have a period of less than about two hours, otherwise it would fling itself to pieces. If you see something spinning faster than that, it either has to have a higher density or it has to actually be solid so things can't fling off because they're held together by chemical bonds.